Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. Something very simple but lovely, potato croquettes. Oh. That's how you say it, I don't know. Croquettes. potato croquettes. So croquettes is kind of a translation, it's French, meaning crispy, sort of. Um, going to be shaped little cylinders, I think you know them. Uh, going to be breadcrumbs, deep fried, they're going to be absolutely beautiful, normally served like as a side dish or as a little snack on their own. Yeah, What's not to like? Anyway, I'm going to crack on with them now. All right then, let's get going. So you need potatoes, believe it or not, for this. So um, I'm using some red skinned ones, they're good for mash, they're nice and floury. A Maris Piper, King Edward, a Russet, I believe, in the States. Yeah, peel them, splash them nonchalantly into some water. Uh, that's a smaller one, so I've cut it in half. Sort of reasonably large pieces here. I do not want a soggy mash. We've got to get to a dry mash. So that one was a bit bigger, so I cut it into three. Okay, so making mash is pretty simple. Pan. Put a lid on it. I put no salt in there because we'll be adding salty ingredients to it. You could alternatively bake them completely with the skins on and then scoop out the inside. That'll be even drier. These are additional flavours that I decided to add to my croquettes. So spring onions, also known as scallions, and irritatingly, over in the UK, now known as uh, salad onions. I, they're spring onions. They have been for years. Let's leave that alone. It's irritating when they change the names of things. Um, yeah, I wouldn't ever normally buy this sort of type of mozzarella but I think it's quite nice this if I bought um, a fresh you know soft buffalo one it wouldn't really work this is perfect for the job I have in hand for it so there you go mozzarella cut it into sticks those are gonna go lengthways inside the croquette and there's one that went straight down my gob uh, Parmigiano Reggiano um, if you're gonna add other cheese to the actual mash I recommend you use one like this that's dry pecorino obviously would be perfect as well or not at all it's up to you spices fried onions you know you can go with it um, egg yolks so egg yolks are going to go into the potato mash mixture I go from shell to shell and I'm saving the egg whites to help with the panne so that's good, isn't it? Not wasting the egg whites. Some people get upset about that. So you can get all the way off my back about it now, can't you? <laughs> I've also got time to get some dips ready. So that's my homemade mayonnaise. I've stopped buying mayonnaise now. Shop bought. I just buy an oil that I trust. You know, one that's not sort of one of these heavily processed vegetable oils. And I just make my own. I'll put a link, shall I? How to make that? And another one now. I've got some cream cheese, and I bought some tapenade, and I thought, well, you know. Let's see if that's nice. So there we go, mixing some tapenade and some cream cheese. It's all quite easy. That other ramekin's got some sweet chilli sauce in it, which I didn't film putting it from a jar into the ramekin. About 35, 40 minutes later, I think these are just about there. Yeah, the knife goes in quite easily, but you can see they're definitely not falling apart. If that happens, that's bad. We want a nice dry, fluffy mash here. So yeah, they're cooked. That's enough. Get those out and then let them drain and let them steam for maybe five minutes or so to get rid of a lot of the extra moisture. I'm using my potato ricer and I just noticed there I haven't actually got the attachment in straight and I wonder why I was struggling a bit but anyway if you've got a ricer, you've got a mill or just a plain old masher, doesn't really matter. That looks nice. I like the way that looks. So um, yeah, croquettes. They're, um, the word is French, it translates to sort of crispy, and we can credit this to an exact date, 1898, and that is Miss, Monsieur Escoffier, who was uh, who basically sort of the grandfather of 
modern French cuisine and British cuisine. Yeah, basically, the guy's a bit of a legend. Anyway, it was him. He did it. And that was me putting the butter into the still warm, but not wet, mash. And in with the egg yolks. And get those beaten in. Nice and quickly. As this stage yet, we still haven't put any seasoning in this. No salt. No pepper. In goes the parmesan. So obviously it's quite a lot of parmesan and that's definitely why I didn't want to put any salt into it until at least after that stage. So we can go, okay, how salty does this taste? And then tons and tons of black pepper. I'll edit that so you don't have to see <clears throat> me doing that for about a minute. Because I love that stuff. And I had a taste. And I thought, okay, a little bit of salt. That's sea salt. Kosher salt. Whatever you want, really. And then go the spring onions. And I'm thinking, I think we're nearly there now. And once I got those in, I thought, oh, there's one more flavour. And it's not in the recipe. Uh, the recipe, by the way, full recipe, in the description. Always in the description. So have a look there. I thought, yeah, nutmeg. Nutmeg and mash, it just goes beautifully. So I'm just going to grate some nutmeg into that. I mean, how much? I don't know. About a tenth of a meg? Is that the unit it is, or is it a nut? I don't know. Put some nutmeg in it, if you fancy, if you like that sort of thing. And that is basically the mixture done. Now, daylight was failing, and I thought, I'm running out of time here. I'm not going to have good enough light to get nice pictures of these when they're finished so this is the next day and you can see someone has been at it that is my lady Arr. she loves potato what can I say so here we go working out the size you want so you don't have to do this the next day but I would recommend you work with this mixture when it is fully fully chilled okay so a couple of hours in the fridge I'd say at least I'm picking a size I worked out formed it into a little cylinder and I thought yeah that's about the right size that I want my croquettes to be so I okay that's the size I'm going for I suppose what should we call that like a, a golf ball something similar to a golf ball and if you don't like golf table tennis anyway <laughs> let's form this thing and I thought well let's do it on the table because it will look nice in the video because I've got the camera at a good angle and I thought I don't know it's really cool and it's really really quite awkward I made a, a little uh, divot for which uh, to put the bit of mozzarella in, and it's a bit messy and a bit sticky, and I'm thinking, okay, I'll leave that in the video, but I don't think that's the best way of doing this, but we've got a nice cylinder out of it. Let's do it by hand. Just, you know, best tool in the kitchen in your hands, so just roll it out like that, put the divot in, insert mozzarella, close over, and do try to be fussy at this stage try to make sure okay, is it fully encased because as much as possible we want this mozzarella especially when they're hot in the deep fat fryer or the oven or pan to stay inside the potato obviously it won't work perfectly with everyone but you know you do your best and there they are look at them lovely back in the fridge or even the freezer for a little while get them really firm so not wasting the egg white it was a little bit viscous a little bit too sort of sticky Eggy, hey, eggy, that's the word. So I added a bit of water to it to thin it down a little bit. So here's pane, breadcrumb, no, sorry, right, so we're gonna put crumbs on it. Flour, egg, breadcrumbs, that's pane, okay. Uh, the breadcrumbs I'm using, they're just like a fine shop-bought dry breadcrumbs. Use some fancy panko if you like, you know, whatever, whatever you fancy. I've done some pane in the past when I've taken some old crackers and blitzed them up into a powder, they were great, but this is the Uncle Matt's tried and tested, should be copyrighted technique of using a slotted spoon in the messy egg bit so your hands can stay reasonably dry and clean and tidy. You'll welcome people that are just seeing that technique for the first time. I don't think you'll see it anywhere else. I think I need some intellectual property on that technique because it's just, look, look how nice and clean and tidy my hands still are. So we've gone from the flour to the egg to the breadcrumbs and I, again, I'm being ever so delicate with this forming it back into the nice cylinder shape and then back into the egg for one more coating of breadcrumbs sort of to be doubly secure that we've got enough coating on this to try to stop them from bursting. Okay, so again, really delicate. Take your time with this. There is no rush. Put a radio on. Listen to a bit of music. Enjoy yourself. Decide which corner you're going to start in. 
and let's get the production line going. So I won't spend too long on this, but as you can see, another angle here. So we've gone from the flower close up view of the slotted spoon technique. It's, it is a winner. And then you can see when I'm, I'm not just diving straight into this, I'm sort of trying to coat it with the breadcrumbs. I'm treating it delicately. Treat it like a lady, people. And that way you can't go wrong. Unless you're really horrible to ladies, then don't do it like that. Don't be horrible to ladies. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, you can see them all lined up there. Pan with some oil in it. I didn't put measurements in the recipe because I didn't know how much it's going to be. I don't know how deep your pan is, etc., etc. But I wanted a good few inches, but making sure my pan is big enough so that there's no chance of it sort of overflowing. I got my temperature to 180 centigrade. That's about 350 Fahrenheit. That took about four minutes. It's about four minutes, folks, to get these from like that to nice and golden and crispy. And of course, you know, try to go a bit longer. You can see a couple of them, little, little holes formed there, a little bit of cheese coming out. And I'm thinking, I don't want all of it coming out, so we'll hoik those out. But again, you know, you could put these on a tray in the oven. You know, they might go a bit flat, I think. But here's one, straight from the pan, onto a board. And just doesn't that look nice? Pretty as a picture. And it's nice and crunchy. And it's piping hot inside and gooey. And just, yeah, nice. Happy with that. And that's not the dips I've done, that's just some ketchup. I just thought, yeah, let's have some of that. Oh, it is really nice. I still see the steam coming off. So I imagine you're all wanting to make those now. Anyway, I'm going to hand you back over to me for the tasting. Okay, that's a potato croquettes or patatas croquetas. That's a guess, but I think it's probably right in Spanish. Um, what are they like? I've had some already. They are absolutely gorgeous for filming. I'm now going to dip one in this very mustardy mayonnaise that I've made. Ha! Oh. <laughs> mm. I hope you forgive me. Mm. I think putting the um, the mozzarella in worked. Some of them burst and it came out in the oil so you know bear that in mind if you're going to put something like that in there but um you know if you want to put a less melty ingredient like you know some chopped up meat chicken ham chorizo you know that sort of thing it'd be very very nice onions in there or just nothing and then just have them as a little side dish to accompany whatever you fancy or have as a snack they are gorgeous you don't have to make them this shape you make little round ones it's really really lovely mm. Mm. And this is a tapenade that I've mixed with some cream cheese. Mm. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Mm. Anyway, I don't gross you out any longer. Give potato croquettes a go and let me know in the comments how you get on. See you soon. Bye.